Good morning, Shady Grove. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name to him.
morning, we greet you in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's our joy, he's our peace. In him we are complete. We'd like to acknowledge those who've joined us by the way of the internet. Thank, thank God for the members of Shady Grove. We greet you in the name of the Christ, the Son of God, who does all things well. We'd like to acknowledge our guests who have logged on. We welcome you to our worship service today. And let's just worship the God. Even in this, even in this time of uncertainty, God is still in control. Let's worship the God that we are trusting in to turn this whole situation around. Our call to worship this morning is taken from two passages of Scripture. Two passages of Scripture. First passage is taken from Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then from Hosea, I'm sorry, then from Isaiah, the 64th chapter and verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. And all we are the work of your hand. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Why well, it's so good to have you with us this morning. And we're going to ask that you'll just take this time to greet the people who are sitting beside you or wherever you are. Maybe you haven't said good morning. Maybe you haven't said anything kind to them. Just take some time to, to say something good to somebody. God bless you. Amen. Share the love of our God with them. You may not uh, be in close proximity to them, and you don't need to be, but wherever you are, we just think, if nothing else, just tell God how much you appreciate what he's doing in your life and how he's going to bring good out of this bad situation for you. Amen. God bless you. We want you to be reminded to obey the rules of the CDC and all of our government officials are saying pretty much the same thing. Make sure that you are careful about putting your hands in your tea space. Wash your hands. Keep them clean at all times. Practice social distancing and just know that, that the Lord has this economy in his hand. We just want to make sure that we are faithful during these times so that we come out, we'll come out wiser, stronger, much better than we were when we, when we went in. Amen. We know that our God is an awesome God and there's no one like him. He's the one true God. If nothing else, we, we are learning how value, how valuable, how valuable corporate worship is. But now we have to use what we have. Let's worship God where, where we, wherever we are. Worship God in our space. Worship God with your family. Spend this time to grow closer to your family, to grow closer to God, to God as well. Come on, let's, let's pray for the service today. God, we ask you. In the name of Jesus, to be God in this service. We know there's no one like you in all of the earth. And we come, oh God, praying that you will prepare the hearts of those who listen to receive your word with receptive hearts. Make our hearts fertile soil so that the seed of your word will take root and germinate and grow into something marvelous and wonderful that will honor your name and be a blessing to other people. During this time of uncertainty, God, we pray that we'll find a way in every way to be Christ-like, to do something good, to find something to enjoy in our life while we wait for you to do the impossible. God, we pray for those uh, who are watching. We pray, God, that somebody's life will be changed. We pray, God, that somebody, somebody who's in despair will be brought out of despair. We pray that needs will be met. We pray that you will minister to them like no one else can. And we'll give you all honor and glory. Now let your Shekinah glory fall in this place. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And when you've done your marvelous work, we'll be careful to give you all honor, glory, and praise in this house today. Bless the service in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you. 
are going to get better in your life in this global situation, this pandemic. Make no mistake about it, God is still at work and he brings good out of every bad situation. If you stay in faith and continue to obey him, he brings beauty out of ashes. That's the kind of God we serve. Things are going to get better. And the best thing you can do for this world, for your nation, for your state, for your community, for your city, your town, your church, is to pray and to believe and to fast and to stay at home so you won't be a contributor to the spread of this awful disease, amen. We will get to the other side, but we cannot do it without faith and trust in God. We've got to believe, we've got to pray, we've got to fast, and trust God to do the impossible in our lives. Just a few minutes, we're gonna be praying the altar prayer, I want to pray for our healthcare workers. If you're listening, we want you to know how, how deeply grateful we are for the sacrifices you're making. We thank you for standing on the front lines to protect this community, this nation, this world, being faithful to, to the obligation, to the call that's on your life. We thank you so much. I want to remind the members of Shady Grove that we still have our uh, non-perishable items drive. It, it, it's still underway. We're asking that you give. We're going to be the church during this awful time. We want people to know that we're here for them. We even have a hotline you can call this morning if you need help, if you're discouraged, if, you're, if you've lost your way, if you, if whatever needs you have. We want you to know that we're here for you to pray with you, to help you, to do whatever we can in this terrible situation. The number is one 373 1-833-474-2227. 1-833-474-2227. 1-833-474-2227. Be sure and call that number. We, we're here for you. We're here to help you through this time. We will get to the end of this, but when we get to the end, we want you to be alive and well living and ready to declare the works of God in the land of the living. God has empowered us to do great exploits. And we believe that the church will shine brighter than, than ever before. God is stretching us into unfamiliar territories, into areas that we have not gone to get the gospel out because Jesus is coming back soon. Soon he will come. And when he comes, we want to make sure as many people as possible will be ready to meet him. Hey Amen. He has a place prepared for us. So we encourage you to do those things. Make sure that you are complying with all of the rules and regulations that will keep your your family, your community is safe. Don't be a contributor to this disease. Be part of the solution. Help stop it so we can get through this. And God will get the glory. We will get the good. Satan and his army will be terrified and defeated. In Jesus' name, we decree and declare it. We declare it. Let's pray. Let's pray together. This is our altar prayer time. You 
may not be able to come here physically, but you can come to the altar to this to gather together with God's people. Join your faith with their faith. Wherever you are, you may be in your living room, you may be in, in the hospital, you may even be on the battlefield somewhere. Maybe you're serving in our armed, our armed forces, wherever you are. If you are a believer, let's join our faith together and trust God. God, how we, how we bless you. How we thank you for what you're doing right now in our lives. We thank you for your healing power that you are our mighty Messiah. You are our Redeemer. You are our way in. You are our way out. You are our way over. You are our way under. You are our healer. There's no one like you in all of the earth. And even in this dark and desolate hour, we say that you're still God. You're still in control. And we're not going to wallow God in our misery. We're going to worship you because we know that you are full of mercy and truth. Now God look down upon this global community, the global church. And we pray God that we'll be inspired, motivated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ even in this dark and desolate hour. We pray God that you'll open our mouth and let our witness be manifested. That we'll be bold witnesses for you, oh God. We pray right now God for the church locally and statewide and nationally God that we'll come forth and show the world that you have life changing power Father we thank you that we are not defeated no God we're in a battle we're in a struggle but we thank you that you promised us victory in the end now Father we pray for those who are bereaved those who lost loved ones because of this awful disease and for other underlying causes. Pray that you'll give them strength, oh God. Look beyond this place and know that there is a silver lining at the end. Know that, that there is joy at the end. Know that there is strength at the end. Father, we pray now that you'll strengthen us in a mighty way so that when we, oh God, come out of this, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. God, we need your presence while we're here. We need, we need God to know that your hand is still upon our life. Assure us, oh God, that you've not left us. You'll never forsake us. You'll be with us even to the end of the world. Somebody is at the end of their rope. Somebody, oh God, is, has come this morning and they've logged onto this website. Help them to know that this is not the end for them, that you still have purpose in them. That if they'll give their life to you, God, that you'll take them to places that they would not ever believe. And Father, we thank you for what you're going to do to Oh, God, in our families, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do in the church family. We thank you for the millions of souls that's going to be saved and become disciples and serve in your kingdom as a result of this. In Jesus' name we pray. If you love him, say amen. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are. Give him praise, honor, and glory. The devil gets mad when you praise him. We thank him for what he's going to do in our life. God bless you.
you've been able to lean on him throughout these years and particularly 
during this awful time. It's time for now. It's time now for you to show him how much you appreciate him always being there for you. Amen. I said there's some things we need to do during these times. We need to make sure that we practice social distancing. Make sure that we wash our hands and make sure that we stay at home as much as we can. Keep this disease from spreading. The church needs to pray and fast and believe. But also the church needs to give. You know, even though the economy is it's been disabled to a certain degree. The bills for the church continue on. Uh, we still have a mortgage to meet. We've got things that have to be paid and we don't want them to be too far past due when we come out of this that we can't catch up and we need your help. We need those of you who have been paying to continue to pay. Those who could who can pay more, sacrifice and pay more. And those who are maybe a guest worshiping with us this morning, we ask that you sow into the ministry as well. You see, during this time, the church needs to continue to be pastoral and prophetic. We cannot continue to be pastoral and prophetic without, without gifts, without your gifts. And so we encourage you to give. We encourage you to practice sacrificial giving. Uh, the Old Testament scripture says that, can I come to God and worship him without a gift? And so we encourage you to do that today. Give sacrificially to God. You know, they used to sing that song in every African-American church, maybe probably other churches as well. You can't be God-giving. No matter how hard you try. Cast your bread upon the waters in many days. It will come back to you. You don't know who you're giving will bless. It may bless you. It may bless your children. It may bless your grandchildren. I know that I am the recipient of, of a harvest that from the seeds my grandparents planted years ago. And if you would be honest, you would have to say the same thing. Because God, we think in years, but God thinks in he thinks in decades and millennials to bless people hundreds of years away. You just trust God with your gift this morning. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over should men get back to your bosom. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive because God loves a what? To you. Raise your gift up to your God. Giving is personal. God, how we thank you for the gifts you placed in our hands. As we hold these gifts up toward heaven, let us be reminded that you're the giver of every, per every good and perfect gift. In Jesus' name we pray. If you love him, say amen. Our scripture this morning is coming from Joshua and Isaiah. We're going to ask that you prepare your hearts for the word of God as our praise team comes back and sing one more song. God bless you.
bless you. He really is blessing us this morning. I want to call your attention as we have been throughout this worship service to Joshua 1 and 9 and then to Isaiah 65 and 8. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Isaiah 64 and 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. You are the clay. We are the clay and you are the potter. And all we are the work of your hand. I want to talk to you this morning from this subject, strength for the struggle. Strength for the struggle. Let's pray together. Father, we honor you in this place. We thank you for positioning us for one of your greatest miracles. We thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do with your word today in our hearts. We pray that we will remove all distractions and give you our undivided attention. Thank you for the fresh anointing. We thank you, O oh God, for this meeting of your people with you. And as, as we preach, we pray that we know that you would speak. Have your way in our lives. We need to hear word from you. Hold us and shape us until you will have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Strength for the struggle. If you've ever been to, to a gym, then you know that weightlifters measure their strength by how much many pounds or kilos they can lift. Strength of a building is measured by how much pressure from wind and earthquakes they can withstand. The strength of a corporation is measured by the amount of assets they may have. Strength of a politician or political party is measured, honestly speaking, by how many votes they can accumulate. During these times, we are paying attention to all of those strengths, but we forget about the most important strength, that is spiritual strength that comes from God Almighty. In fact, the Bible says that you can see the evidence of God's strength when you, when his strength, when you see how he made the sky in the earth and how he changes the seasons and how he hangs the stars out at night and the moon and, and he changes night to day and day to night and he causes it to rain and then stop raining. And we know that he's in control because he's got all power in his hand. And it's so imperative that the children of God see the strength of God. I know that God has providential strength. He has control over everything because, brothers and sisters, he's the only one I know that can change a sin-sick life. Yeah, he, he can change your life this morning. In just a few moments, I'll be on extending the invitation for you to come and know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I'll be extending the invitation for you to join this church or join some church. You need to be a member of a body of believers because God is the only one I know that can change a life. Job says that you can do anything. After Job had undergone all of the tragedies in his life and all of the great losses and his life was turned Toppy, topsy turvy. Job says, I know now that you can do anything. Nobody can stop you. And you remember when Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9, they said about Saul, who had been converted to Apostle Paul, they said, when they heard him, they said, Is this the same man who persecuted the followers of Jesus Christ? God knows how to give you strength for the struggle. Somebody says, well, wait a minute, Reverend, what do I struggle with? Some of us, you're not going to believe this, but we struggle with success. God has blessed us beyond measure. And some of us believe that we're so blessed that we don't have time 
to come to God's house. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to read his word. We don't have time to let our life burst forth with good deeds. That's why God has us on this earth. And I want you to know you can be successfully materialistically, but you can fail miser miserably in your walk with God, being godly. What, what is success in the eyes of God? It is confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. What is success in God's eyes? It is, it is loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul. What is success in God's eyes? Is it, it is serving your community. He who serves will be the leader. He who serves will be first among you. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, we can stumble in the struggle with success. We can stumble with stubbornness. Oh, yes, we can. There's a lot of people who think that their ideas are only the right ideas. There are a lot of people, listen, you can tell them the truth and yet they will continue to reject the truth over and over. It happened to Pharaoh. You read Exodus. You read Exodus uh, 8 and 15. You read that, 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 that chapter. You find that after the second plague of the frogs, after God had stopped the plague, the Bible says that Pharaoh still would not listen to Moses and Aaron. And I want somebody to know that this coronavirus will come to an end. But you got to make up your mind while you're in the struggle, what you're going to do at the end of the struggle. You got to make up your mind that you're not, you will not return as has been encouraged by some of our leaders to business as usual. This world, your life will never be the same and it need not never be the same because you need to make God first place in your life. Make him first priority in your life. Put him first place in your life. Don't you hear the words of Jesus? Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. Well, not only do we struggle with success and we struggle with stubbornness, but like Joshua in Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, sometimes we struggle with weakness. Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, Joshua had an enormous challenge ahead of him. He had to fill some big shoes in the size of Moses. Yes, he did. He had to fill some big shoes. And God knew there would be moments in his life when he would feel weak and afraid and discouraged. And he said three times, Joshua, be not discouraged. Be not dismayed. But be of good courage. And I'm so glad that he said that to him because all of us, brothers and sisters, have our weak moments. As I listen to uh, the, the TV uh, and people who come on, coming on from government in all areas and fields with their expertise, I see where people are depending on politicians to get us out of this. Yeah. I want you to know that you can't be more loyal to a president than you are to a people. You can't be more loyal, uh, uh, listen, to a party than you are the problem. And I, sometimes we are physically weak. Sometimes uh, I, don't, I don't know about you, but, uh, but I, sometimes my hands get tired. And, and sometimes my knees shake. But I, I get weak physically, and you do too if you would tell the truth. Sometimes we get weak spiritually. Any time that you would rather brag, brag over the things that make you look strong, you're spiritually weak. Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, 11, he says, if I must brag, I will brag on the things that show how weak I am and how great God is. Sometimes we get morally weak. Listen, don't try to get even with those who do evil deeds. You trust the Lord to settle the score. Listen, you were made by God's hands. Listen, you are not to live your life like a cowering slave. God made you a child of his. And because you have... Uh, uh, that, 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 that favor on your life, his DNA is in your life because you've been labeled and sealed by the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, there's something that you can do that other folk can't do that don't know him. Well, somebody says, well, Reverend, we, you don't know we're, we're facing this human incurable disease. What do we do when we're facing this incurable human disease? And you feel anything other than strong Remember that the Lord is with you when you communicate what he has commanded. Yeah, that, that's what happened in, 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 in Isaiah's day. Isaiah's day, uh, yes, 
Yes, in Isaiah's day, listen, the, the economy was turned on top of his head. They had an incurable disease called sin. And people were socially distancing themselves. And, and they were, they, they were distancing, distancing themselves from God. They were distanced from God. And I want somebody in this room to know that you've got to remember that when, when the world's economy is turned upside down, when, when, when unemployment rate is high, I want you to know that you were made by God. Yes, you may have been mud, but God can make something even out of mud. Because he's got the power of the potter. And I'm so glad that I know the power of the potter. We, you, you got to, listen, communicate what God has commanded. Because God, the Bible says that God, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When all you're getting, he says, get understanding. And what that means, destroyed for lack of knowledge, people are destroyed because they do not know God. And we've got to communicate his commands. Communicate his commands. Why, Reverend? Because God's commands are faithful. Huh? Yes, yes, they are, because when you are being hunted down by a disease, when you're being stuck by a disease, every time you look around, you think disease may be lurking and waiting for you. I want you to know that God will protect you under the shadow of his wings and under the shelter of his protection. God will look out for you, but you've got to communicate his commands because his commands are holy. Yes, they are. They are full of goodness and truth. When you follow his commands, brothers and sisters, I want you to know they are eternal. They have eternal life in them. One of the first steps of the potter is that, first of all, he's, he's got to get your heart in position where you are ready to receive the word. One of the first steps of the potter, he, has, he puts the clay on the wheel and he pours water on the clay so that it can become more pliable and and usable and so that it can it can be softened but i want you to know that god cannot sanctify you god cannot mold you god cannot grow you into what he wants you to be until you receive the word of god in your heart you got to let the potter put you on the wheel and brothers and sisters and you you communicate what god commands don't let any unwholesome communication come out of your mouth you talk about how you are the head and not the tail you talk about how God gives you victory in the, in the face of defeat. You talk about that the God you serve will have the last word. When, when coronavirus has done this work, I want you to know that God will do a perfect work in you. Not only that, brothers and sisters, when we are facing a, a human incurable disease, we feel anything but strong. Listen, remember God is with you when you communicate what he commands but that's something else when you, when you conquer with his courage. Because he says, be strong and courageous and be not afraid. Be not dismayed. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Be, be strong and, and courageous. You can't be no pink lemonade, limp dish rag, jello hole Christian. Uh, you, you can't be no donut hole Christian. You, you can't be a jelly roll Christian. You've got to know that the, the courage that I have does not come from me. But it comes from the Lord. And, and while I may be afraid sometimes, I will not let fear overcome me. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. And I want somebody in this room today to know it's all right to be afraid for a few minutes, but don't let fear rest, rule, and reign in your house. Don't let it have a regency in your life. Because the God you serve, listen, listen, the reason God said to Joshua that be strong and courageous, be not afraid, be not dismayed, is because he knew that there would be times in his life that he would be afraid and discouraged. But then he would recall that, that, that divine mandate on his life, that, the, the, that divine commission that, that, that God had made him for this. God had been preparing him for this moment all his life. But listen, listen, he had to fight some battles and they had to suffer some defeats in order to humble them. But through it all, they learned how to depend on Jesus. And they learned how to lean on the Lord. And somebody... In this room today, you gotta, you got to know that the second step of the potter, once he's put the clay on, 
on the wheel and, and, and the play has been softened by the water like our hearts have softened by the water of the word. Jesus is the water. But then he, he, he puts the clay on the wheel and the wheel begins to spin. And as the wheel begins to spin, he eases his hand in the top of the clay and his hand is on the inside of the clay molding and shaping it. And his hand is on the outside of the clay molding and shaping the clay into what he would desire. And I want somebody in this room to know you can have courage to conquer whatever you're facing this morning. Whatever you're facing today. Listen, when you know you can trust the hands of the potter. When you, when you know that you can relax when you're in his hands. You can surrender to whatever he wants you to do. Because you are, you are being made by him. And, and somebody in this room, you don't know it. But God put it in you before you ever got in this situation. The courage to go through to the end. That you will not give up. You will not give out. Because God is our way out. And he is our escape. And somebody ought to just take some time right now to thank God for the courage. That's why people who don't know the Lord look at you like you don't have any sense. But you ought to say, I've got, all, I've got good sense. Because I've got good sense to know that God is in control. I know that God will bring me out of this better than I was when I was before. Somebody ought to just take some time to praise God. Not that, not, not to brag, but just, but that on you, but to brag on Him. Because God has already fought your battles and the victory has already been won. Y'all gotta excuse me a minute, but I feel like praising God. Because I don't know about you, but I got the courage. I got the courage. And I know that whatever I face, that listen, God says, listen, not only do you have my promise, but you got my power. And whatever God promised, he will bring it to pass. That's how I get the power because I'm standing on the promises of God. Come hell or high water, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, whether I'm unemployed or got employment, I know that God will bring me out on top of all of this. When you face a human, a human incurable disease, you feel anything but strong remember that God is with you. Yeah, remember he's with you. By communicating what he commands. By conquering with, listen, when you conquer with his courage. When you communicate what he commands and then when you have confidence that you're covered. Because he says, I'm with you wherever, oh God. That makes that puts clapping in my hands, running in my feet. He said, I'm with you wherever you go. He told Joshua, wherever your feet shall tread, it all belongs to you. Nobody will be able to stand. Nothing or nobody will be able to stand against you. Oh, God. Because if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? Reverend, why are you so happy about the covering of God? Why are you so confident in his covering because let me tell you, when God gives me a promise, God gives me the power, I can rely on his presence. God is always with us. You're, you're not in this alone. That's all we're trying to say at Shady Grove. We want to be the church during this time because we want to let you know that we are here to, to stand together, to pray together, to believe together, to, to trust God to do the impossible together. And sooner or later, what the enemy meant for evil... God will use for our good. That's why, that's why I love that song. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for my heavenly home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the shadow. And I don't know how you feel about it. But I know he's watching over me. I know he's watching over this church. I know he's watching over my family. I know he's watching over this city. I know he's watching over our health care workers. And I know he's watching over his church. The global church will come out of this stretch wider and greater and bigger and stronger and reaching more people than we ever have before. Because God is able. Tell your neighbor I will survive. Yeah, I, the strong winds may blow and, and, and the storm may rise. But one thing I know, I will survive this. Somebody ought to give God some praise in this house today. And when I come out, I'll still have my praise. I may not have the kind of money that I had when I, when I went in, but I still have my praise. I still have my worship 
because when I worship him, let me tell you, it changes the atmosphere. That's why Satan wanted to try to shut the church down because he knows that when we gather together on Sunday morning, we hold here in his plan and enemies and pimps and imps back. But I want you to know that the devil is a lie. Nothing shall prevail against the church. Heaven and hell shall not prevail against the church. You can throw everything at it but the kitchen sink. But I want you to know the church will still be standing. We'll be a witness for him. It's because he's been so good to us. And I want everybody who's listening by way of the internet to be encouraged to hang on to God's promises. Communicate what he commands. While everybody is falling around you, just know God will build a fence around you. Just know he's your shelter from the storm. I want you to know it. you can be uplifted this morning because God has given you the power. It's the ability to get it done. It's the ability, it's the ability, it's the ability to withstand whatever pressure is blowing on your life. The potter, uh, as he pours water on the clay, and he centers the clay on the wheel. Brothers and sisters, you, you can't be sanctified. You can't be molded and shaped unless the clay is centered on the wheel. Because if you don't have Christ in the center of your life, like the clay, you will fall apart. When the spinning start, go, starts to go around. And, but one thing else the potter does, but after he eases his hand in the clay, he begins to mold it and shake the clay from, from within and from without for the destiny that the clay has. And for like God does it with our life, as, as the clay begins to spin, the Bible says that, that, that it begins to grow wider and taller. Somebody ought to just take some time to praise God that you can't give up where you are today because God wants to take you places taller than you ever dreamed. God wants to cause your influence to reach places farther than you ever thought about because that's the way God is. And when God spins the clay for so long and it grows taller and wider, sooner or later he takes his hands off the clay, the potter does, and takes his hands off the clay and I want you to know even though you can't feel him, doesn't mean that he ain't watching. Even though you can't see him, doesn't mean that he's not working in your life. God is still working, but you can't give up. So that at the end of your days, you'll be able to say, I fought a good fight. Life is a fight. I've finished my course. I've, fi I've kept the faith. And now I'm ready to be poured out like a drink offering. I want you to know that life is hard. And everybody wants favor, but nobody don't know that favor is not fair. And sometimes you got to go through some hard places just so God can prove to your haters that what you have is for real. Your worship on Sunday morning is for real. Your service to God is for real. Your relationship with him is real. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Well, the door of the church is open in fact, it has been open for over 2,000 years. I want to invite you, wherever you're sitting, wherever you are, to give your life to Jesus Christ. That's, that's the epitome of success. What do you need to do, Reverend? What do I need to do, Reverend? Just say, God, I'm a sinner. I've lived a life where I broke your command. And I want you to come into my heart right now. The preacher said you had potter's power. God, I need you to put your hand on the inside of me. Put your hand on the outside of me. Mold me and shake me into what you'd have me to be. But first, I know I need to surrender to your word. And I want to follow you for the rest of my life. Help me to be dedicated to live as a disciple of yours for the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. You have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you can call the church. We have a hotline number available to you. You can call the church and someone will pray with you and give you further instructions. Somebody in this room, listen. You're looking for a church home and this is where you fit. This is where you grow. This is where you've been led to come by the Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter how distant you are. 
God can reach you wherever you are. He wants your life in his hands. If you just need prayer, then you come. You call, you call by, you come by calling. We have somebody waiting by the lines to help you, to pray with you, to show you just how much God loves you. Come on, trust his hands. Surrender and relax in his hands. You need strength for this struggle. Strength that don't wear out. Strength that won't give up. Strength that won't give in. You come. what God commands. I believe I will conquer the fear and the anxiety. But I need confidence, assurance. God won't fail me. God won't forsake me. He's with me. faith and obey God. It won't work. Stay in faith and obey God. It won't work. Stay in faith and keep obeying Him. In every respect. It may form, but it won't work. It won't prosper. Come on, you were blessed this morning. Give God a praise right where you are. I don't care where you are. In your living room, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, at your work site, wherever you are. Give God a praise. Don't be embarrassed by people looking at you strange. They don't understand that if we're going to win this battle, it will be done with spiritual power. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, thus said the Lord. I hope you'll have a great day. I hope you'll walk away from this service. Communicating what God commands. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. With the courage God has placed on the inside of you, you can conquer anything. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Have confidence that God has you covered wherever you go. He says, I'll be with you. I don't know who you depending on to protect you, but you better start depending on God. He's got you. Like channel one, he's got you in the palm of his hand. And he'll never let you go. You belong to him, he belongs to you. Now, Father, we thank you and praise you for what you've done in this service today. We thank you, oh God, for the hearts you've touched and changed. We thank you, God, for the souls you've saved. We thank you, God, for how you've added to the church as you have saw fit. We thank you, God, for the global church that because of this, you'll make us strong. We thank you for our health care workers. We thank you, God, for giving them the courage to conquer whatever they fear. Your courage. Give them the confidence to know that they're covered when they obey the rules. Help them know that information will, obedience to information will change our situation. Then God, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done through these airways this morning. And whatever, oh God, that's happened, whatever has been changed, if a life has been changed, we know that only your power, your strength can do that. We give you all honor and glory. Now God, as we leave this place, we pray we'll never leave your presence. As we leave this gathering, we pray we'll never leave your grace. In Jesus' matchless name, if you love him, say amen. We love you. Hope you have a great day.